push you all a little bit further. Um, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. We're not sure. But would anybody like to comment on the likelihood or the unlikelihood? So if you had a crystal ball, and any of the speakers are welcome to, to start this discussion and the others to chime in, uh, what do you think the likelihood of uh, some of these rules taking effect in one way, shape, form, or another? And if so, what do you think it's going to look like? Are we going to, you know, see implementation as discussed? Or uh, what sort of... Uh, what sort of modifications uh, are, are we going to see? And would anybody like to maybe jump into the speculative bucket and, and talk a little bit about that? I've never been afraid to, to speculate, so I'll jump in. <laughs> I think that we have to start with the, the sort of presumption in any in any administrative uh, rulemaking like this that most of the time the rules end up being pretty similar to how they are proposed. So I would say that's my base case, is that the final rule is going to, going to look fairly similar uh, to, to the proposed rule. Um, I think that the, the SEC may, as I mentioned, I think it may make some changes around the materiality threshold. I, I think that it's going to keep uh, scope three emissions in some form or fashion. Um, I don't think that the comments that, that uh, Gary Gensler has made about Scope 3 suggests that he's pretty firm on, on keeping those in. Um, and I think it, it helps a bit, just to get a little bit, you know, uh, political, I think it helps a bit that the that the Senate um, stayed in, in, in Democrats' hands because um, that's one less branch of government that could sort of cause problems for the SEC. Um, so I think it's going to look fairly similar to how it looks now. I think for me, the bigger uncertainty is what happens to it once the court system gets its hands on it. And there, there's uh, much more uncertainty. But but again, my my guess would be that it that it survives um, litigation because it's sufficiently distinct in in several ways from what the EPA tried to do with the Clean Power Plan. Yeah, and I can chime in there as well. Um, the distinction between this rule and the clean power plan, this rule is not limiting emissions. It's only looking to provide more transparency and um, improve the quality of the data that is already being reported. Um, so in my opinion, so many companies are already reporting data. It would be a shame to not take the next step to improve the comparability and quality of that data to further empower investors. Yeah, and I would echo um, Hannah Rose and Jason here. Um, I, I cannot speculate, um, but even if the rules, right, they change a lot given the comments or whatever, I do see that this will sort of like uh, Hannah Rose and Jason mentioned that uh, It'll change the behavior and then it'll definitely motivate companies to think about right what they include in their disclosures and this would it has already sparked right investors attention for seeking those information and thinking about the possibility that okay how do i translate those climate related initiatives to and link that to financial performance so i think the seed is already there so Regardless what like shape or form the rules will turn out to look like, I think like the 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 tension between the supply and demand, right? We don't know how it turned out, but then I, I think then we all recognize that it'll it'll have to like be there one way or the other. 